Hey everybody, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. And uh, right now we want to jump into our change maker segment today. And we're going to be talking about um, efforts against coronavirus here in Kenya. Now, yesterday, my guest, the CEO of the National Youth Council, did mention, you know, a few Kenyans who are doing amazing things. And one of the people that he did mention is my guest this morning. His, his name is Peter Frederick Moore, and um, he's the founder of the Global Youth Movement. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here. Great to be uh, here. Clearly, you know, my guest spoke so highly of you yesterday. We <laughs> had to find you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank yeah. you for inviting, uh, accepting our invitation on short notice, though. No worries. Um, so... Tell me a bit about yourself. Um, you founded the Global Young or Youth Movement. Mm. When was that? So in 2013, when I was 20, I standed Stand Up Shout Out. Mm -hmm. Stand Up Shout Out basically is what do you stand for, what do you protect, what do you safeguard, and shout out not just noise, but positive, proactive, solution-oriented action. Okay. Uh, so I started that in 2013. Then around 2018, we became an international non-government organization. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What, what led you to starting this in the first place? I was uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable by how my generation spent their time, their resources, their talents. I felt there wasn't enough info, uh, opportunities for us to do something, to be part of the change. Mm -hmm. So when you're uncomfortable, you have two options, to either change or hide. Okay. And so I'm, I'm sure I hid for a few, a few minutes. Yeah. But finally, I decided to be the change and to actually just create an opportunity for our dreams and our talents to do something to, to shape society. Very interesting. Yeah. And can we ask how old you are when you talk mm, about your generation? So I was 20, now I'm 27. Wow, look at you. Yeah. Very well done. Um, how was the process of getting started? Because I think many of us, like you, are in that place where we're uncomfortable, right? Mm. We complain, we make noise on social media, we're mm. that Twitter police, <laughs> right? Like, um, so we're very like active as far as like socially talking about it or yeah. when we could go out and have coffee, you know, like yeah. we'd really talk about it there, but that's sort of where it would end. Yeah. Um, and we wouldn't stand out and we mm -hmm. wouldn't actually shout out yeah. beyond those spaces. So. so one thing that I realized is that we have a lot of social media warriors and commentators and what happens is you get comfortable. So you are uncomfortable and then you go online, you make some noise or you raise awareness, which is okay. Then you get comfortable. You get satisfied that you've done enough. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it was just the, the drive of being more, of knowing how it feels to have less, knowing how, how it feels to be not have a voice and so not wanting anyone to feel how I've felt in so many different ways and so realizing that you just walk alone and when you walk alone with a genuine heart mm -hmm. help will come mm -hmm. and I think so many people are, are scared of walking alone mm -hmm. and so I think for those first six months in 2013 when I was alone I was supposed to be alone so that I can help other youth realize you don't need a lot of support you just really need what you have within you is more than enough okay and what are the, the sort of areas that you've really decided to focus on and mm. why? So youth empowerment and youth engagement, and then good governance, wildlife conservation, and youth inclusion, mm. uh, and obviously humanitarian works. The reason why this is, is because us as a generation, we are the hugest population in Africa mm -hmm. and the hugest population in the world. We're looked at as a problem, not a solution, where we are the biggest asset. Mm -hmm. And so if we can show governments national, international, and local, that young people can build capacity, that young people can be not just numbers, but actual real impact. Um, and so for me, I really believe that focusing on youth engagement, giving young people a platform, and focusing on youth empowerment, which is giving them leadership, showing a young person that they can be part of society is important. Mm. Isolation is the issue. Mm. Even when you had your previous guest talking about spirituality, when you are isolated, and you don't feel part of society, you will destroy society. Mm. But if you can make a young person see they have a role to play, no matter who you are, mm. social class, religion, tribe, whoever you are, you can play a role. Mm. If I can show you how you can be part of society, you will be a productive asset to society. Okay. So for us, it's really important. And then wildlife conservation is because we live in it. It's, mm -hmm. our, it's our home. If mm -hmm. we're not going to take about, uh, care of it, there's no planet B. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, coronavirus, COVID-19, came because of wrong wildlife conservation. Right, right, right. We actually have some of your images on screen. Um, and maybe you can explain to us a bit of what we're looking at. Um, so basically, like I said, uh, 
COVID-19 came from a uh, wet market, which is basically like a mama boga place where people eat uh, boga and wildlife. Mm. And so from that, coronavirus came through. And so as an organization, we wondered, what can we do? So what we're seeing here is hygiene, sensitization, sanitization, um, us being the change. We had to adapt, evolve, and realign to be part of the solution. There you're seeing us fumigating uh, public service vehicles. Okay. Uh, we're in the community giving food relief. Uh, we have a network uh, through our Empower School program in Kibera and Dagoreti, mm -hmm. where we're serving about a thousand plus families with food relief during this time wow. through the library we built in Kibera. That's the library we built in Kibera. And so really it's about empowering young people to work with the county government, national government to be the change. Okay. So we started in Kibera, Dagoreti, and now we're expanding to Kenya. Wow. Yeah. So how, how do you usually work then? We've heard about the areas that you work and you've mm. also mentioned partners now like county governments. Mm. How do you actually engage in, in your work now? So when right now, as in during this time or before? Even before. Oh, see. So basically, like I said, we, we want to show governments that we, are, we can build capacity. Mm -hmm. So we've worked with the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife. Uh, where we've worked on policy and um, strategies where we put youth components within that so that now we're working on a national youth platform for wildlife conservation okay. with KWS, Kenya Wildlife Service and the Ministry. We work with the First Lady of Kenya with the Pupil Reward Scheme where we do leadership training and uh, wildlife conservation at mm -hmm. State House. Mm -hmm. um, and so we also empower youth in different counties. So in a county, we set up a youth group called a division, and that youth group will be under our organization. So okay. within Kenya, we're in 35 counties plus, wow. and around the world, 21 countries. Wow, yeah. well done. Thank you. Really well done. Um, and so is the, the organization now, is it still stand up and shout, or is this what now morphed into the global youth movement? So the organization is now called World Leaders of Today. World Leaders and of Today. And Stand Up, Shout Out is the main program. Okay. Reason being is when we became an international non-government organization, Stand Up Shoutout sounded too provocative. Mm. So Stand Up Shoutout, we were allowed to make it the main program, but now the official government-recognized, world-recognized name is World Leaders of Today. Okay, yeah. all right. And you've uh, been recognized for quite a number of things as well. You recently won the Kenya National Diversity and Inclusion Award. Um, you were also recognized for your mentorship of the youth by the First Lady. You're also the chairman of the Africa Conservation Youth Council. And of course, here, as we've read or uh, uh, heard now, the founder of Stand Up Shoutout, mm. um, what were your dreams growing up? Like, is this what you imagined <laughs> your life would be? Um, I always knew that I was meant to influence. And even as I was growing up, I mean, most of my family thought I would be a banker. Yeah. Um, but as I was growing up, I had a lot of uh, different interests and talents. But the main thing was influence. Yeah. Now, one thing when you want to influence the world, you have to choose. Is it going to be negative or positive? Absolutely. And so I think the real drive for me was, like I said, I've experienced so much in my life, both positive and negative. And having that innate feeling of, I don't want anyone else to feel negative mm. ever. Mm. So creating a space, a safe space, creating a platform for, where people can have opportunities for their dreams, mm -hmm. where people can really realize their potential and have freedom. Mm. I think freedom is so important. And many of us crave it. Even when you're talking to your other speaker about spirituality, mm -hmm. that's all about finding freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of us young people, I think, especially millennials, right, we're very value driven. We don't just want a job. We want to have impact. It's mm. not just about the money. We want these experiences. Mm. Um, and so I think a lot of us are actually really craving that influence and that impact. We've just not been able to, you know, pinpoint it into something uh, solid. Mm. So. What would be your counsel then to other young people? I know you said, you know, we don't need that much externally for us to get started on something. Mm -hmm. But I feel like for some, like, they may be listening to you and just like, wow, how do I become like this guy? Because mm -hmm. they're even struggling just to <laughs> put their thoughts mm -hmm. together. So just to give you a, a very, uh, an example. So when we started this Corona Relief Campaign Initiative, it was very scary. And one thing I realized is that I empowered leaders uh, from the community to believe in themselves and to have their ideas bring to reality. Mm. I think for most people, they're too self-minded. Mm. And so you need to be ready to share. Mm. You need to be kind enough, not just to yourself, but to your community to realize this isn't just about me. 
yeah. you should be brave enough to go up past your insecurities and your doubts because so many people have told you you're not enough mm. so many people have held you down but you need to believe that you have everything within you mm. when we feel scarcity we don't want to share mm. when we feel abundance and gratitude we will share i think a lot of the things that are holding us back is that we feel we're alone or we feel we shouldn't be partnering with other people mm. because we feel small mm. so as our generation if you want to make influence and impact get your gift and share it with the world wow. find what you're good at and just let it be for everyone who is going to find impact and value wow. don't be scared to be small be scared not to live what don't be scared to be small be scared, be scared not, to, not to live my goodness I'm talking to 27 years of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you, I yeah. mean really really amazing. Yeah. And clearly all, all of this is coming from some place for you and I I mean I don't even know if we have enough time to delve into your life and mm. the different experiences that you've been through. But clearly there's a there's a line that one can draw that yeah. I think you've <laughs> taken whatever stones and bricks and mm. what not that have either crumbled or been thrown your way mm. and you know really tried to build something positive out yeah. of it. So I really appreciate you for that and even just the insights that you you're saying. Yeah. Um and I wonder how many of you can relate to what he's saying right now. You know, don't be don't be afraid of being small. Be afraid of not living. Mm -hmm. Like what a profound statement that is this morning. And so say I'm like ready and you've charged my mind now Frederick yeah. Moore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Yeah. But then I'm like I don't have the funds to do it. I don't have the what, you know, are there any sort of uh suggestions or ideas as far as where someone can start or how did you go about it so one thing that we believe in as an organization is called ubuntu ubuntu mm -hmm. is i am because we are compassion kindness unity empathy how can i be happy when you are not this is about community mm -hmm. so i feel that if anyone is lacking funds or lacking capacity in any way lean on your community mm. lean on the people around you lean on your neighborhood lead on lean on your ward or constituency lead on your county just lean on people um obviously not everyone is going to hold you not everyone's going to catch you but we need to stop feeling that resources is something that the government will give us anyone will give yeah. you need to show your capacity mm. you need to show your value and by showing your value is by taking the action with what little you have mm. and so It sounds crazy but for the first six years we had very little support. It was mm. literally our friends, our family, our community who came together and believed in us mm -hmm. or sh saw us do action. Mm. So take that that action, take that small action and you will be seen. Yeah. And there's always something I said, you know, your vision opens doors. Yeah. When you show your vision however small or big it is, help will come. and people will see okay i can go to that person for this yeah. you saw yesterday the mm -hmm. ceo of the national youth council mm -hmm. we work together we've been side by side but he knows who i am mm. and so he knew that i'm going to say this guy and he, i know he's going to show up mm -hmm. because he knows my value and my vision yeah. yeah and i think that's a really powerful point too as well sometimes i think as young people we feel like because my vision is not or i don't have the resources right now that my vision should not be big or mm. my vision should not be great and really that's holding yourself back yeah. so part of it is that you know a challenge to you guys i think to really begin to write down for yourself right what it is you want to do because i think part of our problem is even when we're asking people to help we've not articulated it properly mm. so they don't even understand what it mm. is that you want them yeah. to help with so you know number one, write that vision down and make it plain that's even what the bible says right um and i think from there then you're able to really assess it analyze yeah. it and it's easier for you to and, articulate to yeah, someone and you need to be authentic absolutely i i think many people know when you're authentic and when you're not yeah. and so whatever it is you want to do in life just be very authentic be genuine mm -hmm. and people can see it Wow. For those who want to I, are there ways for young people to get involved with the work that you do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um so you can reach us on social media. Okay. So at stand up shout out Instagram. Mm -hmm. Uh at S U S O youth Twitter. Um on Facebook stand up shout out just DM us or uh, message us you'll find us and then our website is s u s o dot world. Okay. So yeah. Wow, absolutely amazing. Um someone here says I'm watching the show uh from Taita Taveta that's Vincent Mukua. Uh thank you as well to Carol from Juja who's watching. Uh I do appreciate that as well as Sarah as well as Sarah from Karatina. Asanteni sana for your feedback and your comments this morning. 
man, I've been talking to 27 years of wisdom <laughs> by the name Peter Frederick Moore. Shout out to you, man, yeah, for the work that you're doing. Thing. Yeah, sure. Um, so I just want to shout out my team. Sure. Who, uh, uh, it's really, you want to look here? Yeah. Um, it's really a hard time. I think many people and many young people are feeling helpless and not feeling useful. Um, and it takes a really, a, li a really uh, grain of faith to do something and to be more and in this time. You know, it's very easy to just do nothing and be small. So shout out to my team all over the world, all over the country, who are taking it up to be essential workers, to fumigate, to give out food, to sensitize, to raise awareness, and to curb this uh, coronavirus, COVID-19. It, it's not easy, and so really, to anyone out there, don't forget your worth. I always say I am an important essential asset to this world. The only difference between me and you is that you haven't realized that you are too. Wow. Hey, Jama, you should write a book. These are my punchlines. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Wow. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you very much for no coming worries. and for the, just the light that you're bringing to the world and the Thank great you work that much. you're doing. May you keep it up. Thank you for challenging us this morning no um, to also, you know, be all that we can be, really. Yeah. I think the world needs it at the end yeah. of the day for each of us to show up and show out. With that said, then we're going to take a break now as we get ready for our second hour of the day. We're going to skip over to Relationship Advice with Benjamin Zulu. And of course, later on, we'll be bringing you our fitness segment that's coming up shortly. So stay tuned. Double two triple nine is the SMS line. I'll see you soon.